Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here and welcome to the Kayak Fishing Show Live. As always, brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. It's a warm, sunny day in San Diego finally, so we're going to crack one open. Got the Ballast Point lager. So cheers to you all and I hope you are going to have a good, safe Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Hey, there's a new feature on um, on uh, this software we're using that allows us to show videos and actually have the audio. Uh, we used to not be able to share our screen with audio. So I've got a little teaser here from this coming uh, weekend's uh, episode, which is a trip to Sweden. So I'm just going to play that, bring it up on screen and let you guys see that if for people who haven't seen it and just let that run for a second and let me know if you could if, if it, you are actually hearing the audio because the last time i thought this was working it wasn't so please do let me know if you're hearing the audio i'm going to bring it up here put it on the whole screen I kind of dropped off for a second there. No audio. Okay, well, I'm going to... Knowing me, I made a mistake. <laughs> so, let me uh, close that. Okay, well, I guess it didn't work. Um, I said last time... Now we hear audio of me. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know. Like I said they they said it worked. It was probably me. Um, probably didn't hit the right button or something. That's usually the case. User error on my part. Anyway, we just. Um, I gotta close this. I just got back from Florida, um, and Florida was its typical Florida ness for me. Um, I don't know what it is. I've never had a, a, a lucky trip there. Uh, I was lucky in this one. Um, this one, we had decent weather. Uh, we were at the Guy Harvey Resort in St. Augustine, but the fishing was very, very slow. Uh, the big moon, you know, full moon, really big tides made it uh, really tough fishing, and uh, it was it was tough. Um, of course, uh, the one day I took off fishing, um, which was my last day there, uh, the guys did, did get some fish. So, uh, you know, the, it was a cool place for sure, right on the beach, really nice location, beautiful beach there. So uh, I would highly recommend it and um, just, you know, don't go during that full moon. So anyway, I will say uh, getting used to this stuff here, get our branding back up there. Um Got some comments already. Uh, Jeremy, how you doing? Thanks for uh, checking in with us. Um, Santiago, uh, the, the software we're using um, is called StreamYard. So it, it works really well. It's, it's, a, it's a great system. Like I said, I, I'm sure that I just made a mistake. It's it's a new, a new deal. And so I may have just, like I said, missed the right button. So anyway, uh, as always, you know, we want a lot of questions. Make these always make for better shows. Please share the show with your friends. That'll give you an opportunity to win. Um, if you want your comments to be seen, they do need to be made either on the YouTube channel or on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Salmon's page. If you're commenting someplace where this is shared, we won't see them and you won't be entered. Um, the other thing is we started a kayak fishing show group. So I uh, hope you've joined that group. 
that'll make sure that you do get notified of things. So anyway, without any further ado, I'm going to bring up our friend Amanda from Ocean Guardians Shark Shield. Let me change that so we'll get it a little bigger. Um, they've been a big supporter of our show for several years. Um, it's uh, a product that when I first saw it, I was skeptical. Uh, it is a product that I 100% believe in because I've seen it work. So anyway, Amanda, thank you for joining us here again. Uh, it was one of the best shows we've ever had the last time you were on. It's because you were so informative. So welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. So uh, you've uh, recently moved. Um, you were in Florida and now you're, where are you now? I can't remember. I'm yeah, just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, complete shark capital of the world. Oh. Lots of sharks in Minnesota. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we were in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is obviously much better for shark business, but we had some family issues that um, we moved back to my hometown to be closer to family. And our son has autism, so it's a lot better services and supports up here for him. So oh, that's good. That's good. So now it's I always... just travel to Florida. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. And you don't have to Especially be there. In the winter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess they both have positive and negatives. Um, the no seams that we had to deal with on this last, last trip were brutal down in Florida. So. Well, in July in Florida is brutal too. I mean, you walk out of the house and you're sweating. So, Right. So um, before we get going, uh, let, like I said, we'll uh, fill a uh, Hey Jim new listener and kayak fisher, Chicago area, any tips? Well, I've never fished in the Chicago area, so um, no, but I can certainly give you basic tips. Uh, Michael Glum says land sharks. I'm assuming that's up where you are. <laughs> and your comment from the YouTube channel, um, AJW White. Cheers, man. How are you? And Edgar, thanks for joining us as always. I appreciate it. So uh, to start off with, actually, I'm going to share uh, my screen one more time and see if I can do it properly this time. And I'm sure this is what it was. I didn't hit the little button there. Um, we have a, a little video uh, from Ocean Guardians Shark Shield that uh, kind of gives a, a, a really good look at how well this, uh, this device works. And uh, so I will bring that... Uh, I'm going to make that full screen just so it's a little, uh, little bit better there. And let's see. Let me know again if you, if you have audio on this one. This one, I think, just has music. But... So first off, do people still hear, still hear me talk? And are you hearing that music from the video? This video we saw before, it is a very, very um, convincing video. But it just runs over just about a minute. Uh, my wife says she can hear me talk and music. So, woohoo! I did it right that time. <laughs> So they, they, they add these great new features and then you have to figure out how to use them properly. I don't know why it just made itself smaller like that. That was kind of odd. Oh, I see, because that's where the video is. So you will see this, this white shark come in very fast and uh, with that shark shield on, man, it just, it turns. Um, As I said, I have seen this thing work. I've seen it um, push away hammerheads, um, makos, and several uh, tiger shark when I was in uh, South Carolina. So pretty, pretty dynamic footage there. And like I said, to, to prove that it works. And, and that's the thing it is um, it has been tested, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the technology has been around for close to 20 years now. And so we've got now four independent studies by um, different universities actually proving the efficacy of our product. So that footage that you were just showing there, that was um, the seal decoy toe. Um, and, you know, one of the most commonly questions we get asked all the time is, will it stop a charging great white? And that's exactly what that footage shows. Um, so that one was 2012. And then there was another study that was conducted um, 2000, they released it in 2000, end of 2017 or beginning of 2018. So that was done off the coast of Western Australia by the University of Western Australia. Um, they also did some testing in, in South Africa. Um, and then there was another one that was done on our surfboard product um, and that was just released in 2018. And that they tested actually other technologies in addition to our technology. Um, and ours was the only one out of six products that worked. That's amazing. Actually, uh, if you guys go to uh, the sharkshield.com website, there's a bunch of videos. And there was a pretty good one. I was looking at the stuff today um, where they had some aerial shots of a surfboard on the water. Yep. And all the sharks around that surfboard, they had a bait, a tuna basically hanging mm -hmm. from the bottom of it. And he turns that thing on and all of a sudden those sharks, although they were still in the area, yeah, they, 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 they were probably yeah. 15 yards away from the, where mm -hmm. they were directly under it. So if yep. you guys get a chance, go check out that video. It's uh, it's pretty intriguing. Again, that's at sharkshield.com. There's a lot of information on all the products and, and quite a few of these uh, videos and some testimonials and such, right? Yep. Yeah. There's tons of testimonials. You know, after 20 years of having people use our products, we literally have thousands of testimonials and it ranges everything from great whites to bull sharks to makos, you know, lots of different shark encounters over the years. Uh, Jay Carlos says, wow. Uh, <laughs> Michael Glum, that's crazy cool. Hey, Diana, how are you? Um, Jay Carlos says might use when spearfishing. And you know, that's that's what the the Freedom Seven was really designed for, right? It was for Yeah, that's our predominant, you know, if I look at who uses our product most frequently, it's absolutely spear fishermen. I mean, when you're carrying chum around your waist, um, you know, you're going to attract sharks. And in some areas of the world, they've actually learned the sound of a spear gun. And as soon as that gun goes off, the sharks are in. Wow. Yep. It, could you guys make it work on sea lions, please? I know. If only they had an ampullae of Lorenzini and some places they want it for Goliath grouper and things like that too. So Gators. Yes. Uh, Mike Sawyer, uh, love the show. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeremy has a question. Uh, what kind of radius and depth is it able to repel sharks? So um, it depends on which product that we're talking about, there is a little, you know, there's, um, it's based on, you know, the physics of the, the technology. So um, if we're looking at our Freedom 7, which is what we use for kayaking, um, this is the actual product. So this is the power module. And then we've got this trailing antenna. And if that's all laid out, it's about six feet in length. And inside there, um, there's two pieces of stainless steel mesh, and those are electrodes. Um, and the seawater acts as the conductive medium. So with this um, Freedom 7 product, um, we're looking at a 12 to 15 foot radius um, on the product. Um, and I don't know if he means the depth rating of the product or the actual like depth yeah uh, do, you know. do you mean uh, how deep you can go with it or yeah um, i mean the depth um rating on it is 165 feet so you can take it to that like for scuba divers obviously for kayaking that's not really gonna happen i hope my kayak doesn't go that deep <laughs> <laughs> well and this thing works really well as for the kayaks as well i mean like i said it was designed to go around the um ankle of a yeah. diver but uh, for me, I, I attach it to the side handle on the kayak and then just leave the um, the cable out. And then when I'm landing a fish, I just simply turn it on because yeah. I don't like to leave it on all the time. Well, depending um, on how long you're out, I mean, the battery runtime is six hours and a lot of you guys are staying out for, you know. Right. Eight, and and again, it depends on where you are. Um, I mean, if I was a, a NorCal guy, um, I would probably have it on the entire time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't have uh, that type of issue down here, but we do have fish 
or sharks that like to steal fish. Yep. Um, so that's where I see it uh, being one of the, the biggest value for me and it, it just making you feel more comfortable. I, you know, when I'm guiding, and I have clients out there mm-hmm. and all of a sudden there's a hammerhead swimming around you. It's, it's a little unnerving for somebody who's not used to being out there. So, yeah. you know, it definitely gives you a little bit of sense of security. Absolutely. Um, what's this say? Uh, how is it with a day's catch hanging off the side of my kayak? Well, it's the same thing as spear fishing, right? I mean, in Florida, they actually carry their fish on their their waist. And so they'll have, you know, some guys have 10 fish and they're swimming along with that. So it's no different. I mean, it's when it, we do it, our testing, right. we chum up and we hang large pieces of tuna out there. And that's what we're keeping the sharks away from. With that said, Jeremy, I still wouldn't hang my fish off the side of my kayak because, again... Our issue here is sea lions. Mm. So uh, if you're hanging a your catch off the side of your if your kayak, you are inviting unwanted guests. And those the one time I've been off of my kayak is because a sea lion grabbed a fish that was hanging off the side of my boat and it flipped <laughs> me over. Oh, wow. I mean, this was a uh, a weird domino effect of things that happened. I don't keep my fish in the water, but I had knocked it in the water and the fish grabbed it. So uh, yeah, don't don't hang fish off the side of your kayak uh, off your kayak if you can help it. Uh, it's always better to put it inside an insulated game bag anyway. Um, and that's what Santiago says: never hang your catch over the side. Period. Um, Santiago, my brother was a free diver and swore by it. He also had a few stories from the dry tortugas. Um, I've never been there. I've heard Me it's either. really nice. Um. Looks like the antenna can be routed through a scupper. Yes, yeah. Peter, it can be. And that's yeah. how I do it quite often, depending on the boat I'm in. Yeah, some of the scupper holes, I can't remember which um, brand of kayak has really narrow ones. And so you can't thread the antenna all the way through because you do need to make sure that both pieces of stainless steel are fully submersed in the water. The electronics housing doesn't need to be in the water, um, but the stainless steel mesh does need to be submerged or you're going to limit the size of your field. Also, oh, um, if that mesh isn't all the way through and it's actually still part of the kayak, it would pulse electricity through the kayak. I had one guy call in one day and he's like, my legs get so fatigued. He had a, a pedal kayak and he's like, they get so fatigued. My muscles are just twitching all the time. I'm like, is it all the way through? So he was actually using like a tens machine on his legs all the time because <laughs> I, I have I've been zapped by it admittedly a couple of times and it's not bad but it, it will startle you if you're not um if you're not if you're not it. expecting yeah. it for sure yeah. so um just for, for people who haven't maybe didn't see the last show or, or aren't familiar how exactly does the shark shield work right so um all sharks have and um, rays have something called an ampullae of Lorenzini. And what those are are just the little Delphilled electrical receptors on the bottom of the shark's snout. Um, so our product, we have two electrodes. Um, and depending on the product, it's a different configuration. Seawater X is the conductive medium. And that produces this three-dimensional electric field underwater. And that field um, induces spasms into those electrical receptors. And it overpowers them. And um, it keeps the sharks a distance away. From yeah, they don't it is like cause a spasm of some sort. Or... Yeah, it's a spasm. So it's very uncomfortable for them. It doesn't cause any long-term damage to the shark, um, but it keeps them away because it's so uncomfortable. And I know uh, one question that comes up uh, fairly often is, well, what about the fish? Does it affect your fishing? Not at all. Um, fish don't have an ampullae of Lorenzini, so there's nothing for them to sense in the water. It's just like if you were to f- be in the water next to the field, you wouldn't feel anything either unless you physically touch that um, electrode. Yeah, don't um, don't put the wet electrode up to your mouth either. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> Not personally, but I was there when somebody did it. Why would they do that? He didn't quite understand how it worked. And we kept telling him how it worked and he didn't quite get it. And he put it up to his mouth. (laughs) Okay. 
Especially if you have metal fillings, I can't. Oh yeah, we very we, comfortable. We all um, pretty much rolled on the floor laughing. It was it was hysterical. But then he then he understood how it worked. Yeah. The other thing that people really don't enjoy is if they forget to turn it off when they're getting back in the boat from diving and they're getting into an aluminum boat and it electrifies the entire boat. <laughs> We only make that mistake once. It's yeah. not so bad in a fiberglass boat. I've done it in a fiberglass boat and I didn't even realize it till I was like, what is, why is my leg tingly? But yeah, yeah like I said, I, I've done it where I've gotten it on my leg and it's always, like I said, it's more of a, just a startling thing because you forget about it. Yeah. Um, Mike Sawyer says he's a NorCal guy and would love longer battery life. Um, there was another question here in, in in regards to the battery from Jeremy. How many years will the Freedom 7 take a charge? Are there replacement batteries? So um, the, the battery specification used to be 300 charge and discharge cycles. Um, and about a year ago, we upgraded the battery. So now it's 1,000 charge and discharge cycles. Um, the 300, depending on your use, I mean, if you're using it every day, it'll probably last you about two years. Um, if you're the average user, it was lasting five to six years, but the new one, you know, I'm guessing it's going to be eight to 10 years. Um, in terms of replacement batteries, the whole thing is watertight, you know, we're taking it to depth, so it's got to be factory sealed. So what we do is a repair by replacement process, similar, like if your iPhone dies, you take it into the Apple store, you give them the old one, and then they swap it out with a refurbished one. So we have a process that's similar to that. And that just gets people back in the water more quickly because we can instantly swap it out as soon as it comes into us. That's great. What does something like that cost? Um, so the, the refurbished unit's 275 bucks. Well, that's great. Yep. That's a really good deal. Um, do any other species of fish besides sharks have those receptors um, like rays or rays do? Yeah. But it doesn't affect them as much because of the orientation of their ampullae of Lorenzini. It's underneath them because they're sitting on the bottom trying okay. to find their food. So the field is, it's difficult to get it underneath them, but I mean, oh, they're typically not a problem for most of us going in the water. So we're not too concerned about that. Uh, Santiago, what size battery does it use? But I mean, it's a built-in recharge. It's a built-in, yeah. And but it's a lithium ion. ion. Yep. Oh, that's great. Um, you guys have, I mean, you recently changed the name. It probably, well, not recently now. It's probably been over, over a year, year now. Yeah. Yep. yeah, you changed to Ocean Guardian powered by Shark Shield. Yeah. Um, what was the reason behind the name change? Um, you know, one of the reasons was the direction that we're taking the company. Um, we're trying to focus more on conservation and we're doing a lot of larger range products. Um, and so we're not only protecting humans, but we're also actually protecting sharks as well as other ocean creatures. Um, our goal is to be able to replace shark nets. Um, and that you know also affects turtles and whales and dolphins and whatnot. Um, we also wanted to differentiate ourselves from any other technology out there. Everything is shark, 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 and so we wanted something that was different. And you guys do have uh, quite a few different products now. And I, I was trying to bring up the website and I went to the wrong page. Um, getting more in, and not just you have the the Freedom Seven. Yep. Um, I'm gonna change something real quick to get that rid of that. So it's a little bit, not quite so busy. So you have the freedom seven, which is the one, uh, which is really ideal for us kayakers. It is, um, yeah. and then the, of course the surfboard one, which. Yep. That's been out for gosh, two and a half years or something now. Right. And that thing's really come a long way. I mean, that's just such a clean little setup. I know people yeah. have asked in the past about using it on a kayak. The problem is, is we tend to drag our kayaks. Exactly. You would rip off those, um, that sticker electrode that goes on the bottom. You, most of you would yeah, damage it and it would be cost, quite a costly endeavor for you. So what you guys are time. seeing on the screen right now is that video I was talking about earlier. Uh, where the sharks are all around this surfboard and they turn it on and it, like I said, go over to the page and check it out. So uh, some of the new products you have is this new East Beer. Beer. What, yep. What's the idea behind that? So a lot of our free divers are um, 
and snorkelers are concerned about the trailing antenna on our Freedom 7, they find it a bit bulky. Um, so the E-Spear is just a really slick little handheld shark deterrent. So um, you can attach it with a carabiner to your weight belt or there's an additional holster you can get so you can put it on your thigh. Um, and then if you find yourself in a situation where you need the product, you just take it out, you just pull that little trigger, it extends open um, like, you know, a baton, and then it produces a smaller electric field. And so as soon as you click open that thing, it's active and working. And so that's what it looks like fully extended. So it's about three feet when it's fully extended. Okay. Out. I saw something I was looking at that is something to, to turn it off. You have to like hold it above the water and fold it up or have a. So the, yeah, you're just taking it out of the water so that it's deactivating the electric field because as soon as it sees water, it's on. So okay. you could deactivate it by closing it in the water. It's just from a comfort perspective, you probably want to not have the electric field going. But if you're wearing gloves, it's probably not that big of a deal. And of course, um, some of your products also, and let me see if I can get. So we've got, the, yeah, the dive, or I'm sorry, the um, the Boat 01 and the Fish 01. Okay, so. That was our bigger range products. So for use on the boat. And one of the things that really differentiates these products in addition to the larger field um, is that they have a much longer battery life and you'll actually be able to power them from the boat power. So you can run them all day and night if you wanted to. So that's the Fisho one. And so that one you can actually drop down into the water at any depth that you want. And so in theory, you know, if you're fighting, bringing up some fish and you know that there's sharks in the area following your catch, you can actually drop it down to whatever depth you're fishing at, and then you could bring it up if you wanted to. Um, but it does have a pretty substantial depth to it. I mean, it's nearly um, a 50 foot um, depth radius on the product. Wow, I would think that would be awesome. I mean, I watch a lot of fishing shows from, from Florida. Uh, yeah. Those guys you know, fishing for, for their yellowtail or mm -hmm. amberjack, and those guys get sharked a lot. They do. Um, yep. th that seems, seems like it'd be, particularly um, uh, if you're a, a charter fisherman um, and you got clients losing fish, this would be exactly. a, a great thing. And also for the, the tuna fishermen out here that tend to, to you lose like tuna, big tuna, to the sharks. This thing would be a great thing, you know, to have out around the boat. Now this one submerges. I saw the other one. Um, the boat. Oh, one. Yeah, it comes. So, and the other neat thing about this is that it's like completely plug and play. So you can take that black, that power module, um, and you can unplug the antenna on that one and you can put the Boto one antenna on it. You can actually slide that product into the buoy um, for the Boto one. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, to use it in different applications. So once you have one product, you can buy the different accessories. So oh, I see, see that. Yeah, I can see yeah. how that drops in there. Yep. Yep. So it just slides in there. So the Boda one comes with that um, buoy and the flag and everything. So, um, and that you can just float off the back of the boat. So in a lot of places, um, you know, where they've had numerous shark attacks in a short period of time, people are really concerned about letting their kids swim in the water. Um, I was just talking to somebody from Cape Cod yesterday and um, because of all the great white activity that they've had up there, a lot of people are talking about not even taking their boats out this summer. So they're really excited to have access to this technology so that they can feel secure going out in the water again and enjoying summer ocean life. Right now, is this that like the, would this product here be similar to what you're talking about as as far as using as a barrier rather than um, shark nets? No, I mean you could make a mini one with this because you can daisy chain four of them together, so you could make you know okay. a mini enclosure. Um, but the other product that we're working on is actually a big cable, um, and so it's like every I can't remember the exact distance now, but you could. Um, say 10 meters or so and then it's got like a long cable that drops down and so you're making a virtual net you could make it up to you know you can make it 100 meters long and enclose an entire beach area and so uh, that would prevent the sharks from getting into the area right and, and, and what a great idea like i said i mean 
we got to think about conservation on these apex predators and there's nothing worse than seeing these things get tangled up in a shark net. Yeah. Um, well, and, and it's not only the sharks that get tangled up in the net, it's right. turtles and whales. And the beauty of this technology is that it would allow all those to pass through without issue. It just keeps the sharks out. And so that's more of a permanent installation. Zachariah Cliff says three times the product life. Well done, Shark Shield. Um, Jeremy, uh, please make a Shark Shield that us kayak anglers can plug into our nine volt batteries. Maybe something we can attach to our kayaks. Yeah, I've been asked that um, quite a bit in the last year. So I have passed it on to the engineers. And um, obviously, we're quite busy right now with the three new products. Um, but that's on our product improvement list for the Freedom 7. Well, and I'm sure there's, there's, always, there's always issues. I mean, you're dealing with electricity and water and salt water <laughs> and, yeah. and, and trying to uh, make sure uh, you're not zapping people all the time or uh, when you have exposed connections in salt water, particularly those things just corrode so exactly. quickly. Yep. That is a challenge. And I think, um, you know, that's something that was really different for surfers um, to have to rinse off their surfboard. You know, divers are used to rinsing off their equipment when they get in the, out of the water, um, but surfers weren't. And so they have to actually rinse off those electrodes because they are stainless steel and they will corrode if you don't just rinse it off. Uh, Mike Sawyer asks, does the e-spear float? No, it does not float. Be a probably good idea um, to maybe have on. I mean, it, it, you can attach it with the carabiner, but maybe have it on like a a gear or something, or something. Yeah, some kind of a, a, a lanyard like that. Um, Tom Riley is up in NorCal. Um, great product, and congrats on grow on your growing family of product. <laughs> I kids. know Tom. <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, and congratulations. Uh, you uh, did recently, I mean, we got you out of maternity leave to come and do this show, yeah, right? Five week old baby, yes. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Thanks. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where are you seeing most of these? Uh, you said your, your biggest um, base of uh, users are free divers. Well, spear fishermen. So that spear fishermen. is both free divers and scuba divers. And uh, originally the product was developed in Australia? Um, well, the technology originally came from South Africa. So okay. you know, 25 years ago, they had a similar situation to what we had in Australia, where they had a spate of fatal attacks by Great White. And so they were trying to look at how do you protect divers and surfers because the technology they had accessible to them was drum lines, which just a big hook off a float that you bait up and you know, try and catch sharks or the nets. And so obviously those do nothing to protect people that are going off um, in remote. Sounds like my house. Oh, I know. Somebody rang the doorbell. Dog barking. Yeah. Yes. Well, for anybody who's seen this, uh, sometimes when we're doing this, my dog will come and jump up on me. I, I, have, <laughs> I have four dogs. Oh, wow. One so, is yeah. enough here. <laughs> Yeah, so they they definitely keep us busy. Um, the uh, the price point seems to if seems to have come down a little bit. It was yeah, it was six forty nine. Um, gosh, when did we drop it? Eighteen months ago, and now it's four ninety nine. So yeah, we had a pr pretty substantial price drop. That's fantastic. And that was when we made all the um, the battery improvements. So we were able to pull some cost out of the product. And so we pass that on to our customers. Yeah, they, um, battery technology just keeps getting better and better. So, yeah. um, Zachariah, I have no issue with the price of a shark shield. My peace of mind is worth the cost. That being said, I don't think we should have to pay extra for a bag to store it in. <laughs> um, I mean, if I buy a bag to store my dive equipment in, my BCD doesn't come with a storage bag, uh, so. That's it. That's it. And quite honestly, I prefer to not have a bag to store mine in because um, I like to let it, I like to have it more out so it dries out better. Because a lot of times yeah. I, I, I had the, the bag um, on one and I would throw it right back in there and it was still wet. Yeah. 
And then I did get a little bit of, uh, I'd open it up like, you know, a week later and it was still wet inside. So I personally would rather just have it out and let it dry out. Um, of course now we got a few, uh, congrats, Amanda. Congrats. Congrats. Um, Um, I think Jeremy, I think the Aussies even got a rebate from the the government. Well, the Western Australians did. So, um, because they had multiple fatalities by great whites, they did do the drum lines and that wasn't effective. Um, So they started looking at ways to get people to take personal responsibility for their safety in the water. So they actually commissioned, they gave a grant to the University of Western Australia and they tested our technology and they tested new and novel technologies like bubble curtains and um, orca sounds. And then they tested a few other deterrents that were in the marketplace. Um, And for any of them that were effective, they were going to offer a $200 rebate on it. So ours again was the only one that was found to be effective. So if you buy a Freedom 7, a Scuba 7 or a um, Freedom Plus Surf, you get $200 back from the government. How is the um, Scuba 7 different than the Freedom 7? Um, it's just the, the mounting configuration. So instead of having that long trailing antenna that houses both electrodes, one of the electrodes actually goes on the back of the tank. And then you only have an 18-inch electrode that goes off of your ankle. So the people that use that are typically um, research divers that may be carrying a lot more equipment or military um, divers use it a lot because they're in tighter formation and they can't have that trailing antenna gets in the way of each other. I gotcha. Um, Ruben, uh, we, we kind of touched on this earlier. I have a Freedom 7 curious of the price of having the battery place when it does die. And uh, you said that was it. it. You don't actually replace the battery. You do a swap out. What was that price again? It's two, $275. So that's, and that's going to get you six more years of use yeah. <laughs> with the, the new battery, particularly if you're swapping out an old one with this for the, for a newer one with the newer battery. Yeah, we do cut it off. Like, so we updated the units, gosh, like six years ago or so now. So their old ones had a clear housing. I think probably the original units you had were clear. Um, Mm -hmm. So if it's a clear housing, we don't do the upgrade anymore. You need to purchase a new unit because it's so old. We can't just continue to do refurbished units forever. I know that. Retailers aren't very happy if we. That sounds fair. Uh, Santiago, uh, my wife's been wanting me to get one. That will be my birthday gift of this year. It sounds like a great birthday gift. Yeah. I'm all for, you know, getting safety equipment. Um, I'm, you know, VHF radios, uh, personal locator beacons, all yep. that stuff. And and this is just another uh, piece to that puzzle to staying safe and, and making, like I said, just, I, I, you know, I've, I don't have a fear of sharks on the water. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've been on the water for my whole life, but uh, as many people know, um, the monsters come out at night. <laughs> I don't know what it is when you're out on the water and something brushes against your leg or bangs against the side of your kayak in the dark. It's always much more. Well, you can't see what's going on, right? Your imagination gets the best of you. Right? Exactly. It's that shark that's in your head that can mm-hmm. drive you nuts. So just by having that shark shield, being able to put that in the water, um, like you said, it gives you that peace of mind, makes you, you can relax. Yeah. Um, Tom Riley, I have used Shark Shield quite often for marathon swims from Catalina to the mainland. First off, Tom, what are you doing swimming from Catalina I to think the mainland? He's escorting in his kayak. So okay. he's going with people as their support. Okay. Yes. Have you ever, I, I've done this, I've been an escort to a swimmer. Mm hmm. It is mind, I mean, congrats to Tom for doing it because it is mind numbingly boring. I'm sure it's a lot slower than you would know. Oh, you have hard. to paddle so slow and you got, you basically stay right in yep. front of them. So you're constantly like this, making sure you're in the right position. I hated it, <laughs> but good for you, Tom. That's a nice thing for you to do. Um, so boy, <laughs> Give me a free kayak, please. If I had one to give you, you'd be the first on my list to get a free kayak, but I don't have any. Um, 
easier to get approval from the CFO for safety equipment than more fishing equipment. And I assume in the CFO is, is the wife. wife. <laughs> um, well, that's a good thing. She obviously wants you to come home if she's wanting you to buy safety equipment. Yes. Yes. Um, and like I said, and that's, that's the thing is um, it, it's easy to justify. It's like people will go, well, you know, I, I got to get a VHF radio. What's the cheapest one you have? Mm. Well, do you really want the cheapest one when you yeah. need it? <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it, buy the best one you can, mm -hmm. you know, because you want it to work when you need it. Exactly. Um, you know, it, and, and the same holds true for a lot of things. You know, just get, when it comes to safety equipment, don't go cheap. And I think the, these things are, are very reasonable for something that, you know, you, you will use every time. If you're a saltwater guy, you know, you're going to, it's just nice to have it on the boat. I mean, mm -hmm. we have white sharks here in San Diego, not, uh, not a lot, but our biggest issue, like I said, is Mako sharks, blue sharks, hammerheads yep. and all that. And they can just get straight up annoying. Mm -hmm. And if you're not used to being on the water and having a shark buzz around you, or you, you know, if you've seen that video of the guy uh, paddling and the hammerhead keeps darting underneath his boat, um, it, that's not fun. Um, no. And you know, they're not going to, they're not going to knock you out of your boat or anything, but it's unnerving. So that, that peace of mind. Um, Jeremy says, I love and believe in the shield. I know it's a nice a nice price for a peace of mind. I just wish more kayakers were able to afford one. I mean, a lot of people own kayaks because they can't afford a boat. Well, uh, I mean, they, yeah, that's true. But, um, you know, I, I think it's a fair price for, for what it is, honestly. I mean, nothing in tech is cheap. And, and uh, I imagine if uh, every single kayaker was buying one, it'd be able to bring the price down. But, true. you know, <laughs> it, it, is, it is, I mean, it is a niche item. It is absolutely. to be to be sure, but um, we've had enough kayak anglers get knocked out of their kayaks, particularly up in in uh, NorCal, and mm -hmm. we've certainly had enough guys, um, you know, have fish taken from them. Uh, you know, everybody's seen old Isaac's uh, video from Hawaii, where the shark just followed his fish right up to the boat and breached. Yeah, um, you know, these things in, in those particular areas. It, it, it's a, a very, very good tool. Mm -hmm. And Zachary has a good point. <laughs> cheap ain't good and good ain't cheap. <laughs> um, Ruben, my leg is worth more than $499. Don't mind the price. And that's true. Yeah. And everybody who has seen me, uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many comments I get on our videos of like, you're going to get your fit, foot bit off, <laughs> you know, because I hang my feet in the water a lot. And uh, one of the very, very few actual one guy has died from a shark attack while kayaking. And that was in Hawaii and he lost yep. his foot and, and bled out. So yep. again, you know, it's just, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but taking those precautions. And as I said, the reason I like it is when I'm landing a fish, I tend to drop my foot in the water. You know, you're reaching over the side of your boat and you know, not only protecting yourself, but protecting your catch, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a fish you want to land and keep, um, you know, uh, if you've all uh, seen videos of uh, guys tarpon fishing and some of those big hammerheads coming and nail your tarpon, how nice would it be able to actually successfully release that fish so it can swim away instead of having it get tagged by your boat? Yeah. Um, do Where is your biggest market? I mean, is, is it NorCal? Is it Florida? Is it Australia? Um, well, Australia is our biggest market because we've been there for so long. Um, in the U.S., it's Florida and then California. Yeah, I bet. And like I said, I, I, I can't remember what that the other item was called. the Not the boat one, but the uh, other one. I, I As a charter boat captain, I would oh, just... Oh, that's one. Yeah. Yeah, I, as a charter boat captain, I would uh, imagine that would just be... Uh, I mean, that'd be... I, I hate the word game changer, but I mean... If you're losing a lot of fish in some of those areas yeah. that you just can't get a fish in. Um, well, in some places, they actually, the fish just wait at the marinas. And as soon as they hear the boat motors, they follow the fish out because they know that they're going out to catch fish. And then yeah. they can sit and eat them. I mean, there's places in Western Australia that the charter boats are losing 90% of their catch. 
So you're paying $800 to go out for a day fishing and you lose nine out of 10 fish. That's not great for business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, this is very interesting. It's the first I had, uh, when you sent me the information a couple of days ago is the first I'd seen on these. It's, um, I can really see the value for, for, for those guys. Yeah. Um, Zachariah, uh, a shark shield is equal to the cost of a couple high end rods. Well, honestly, it's about equal to the cost of one high end rod. You're talking, <laughs> uh, you know, a decent rod and reel, you know, is right in that range. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's totally worth it if you're in those areas. Um, we got, uh, yeah, I mean, and again, the same thing, uh, you know, lots of anglers are spending five to $2,000 on fish finders. You know, it, it's oh. very, very true. Um, <laughs> uh, Santiago, I've been waiting for this price drop for years. I've been fishing from a kayak since 1977. Did they even have kayaks in 77? <laughs> I was late eighties. So, um, where Santiago, where are you? Um, there were some guys kayak fishing, uh, in Florida and some sit on top boats way, way back then or sit inside boats way back then. So, um, where are, are most of the, uh, the products available? Um, are, are you mainly in dive shops? Are you in any I'm kayak there. shops? Yeah, there's a few kayak shops that do it. Tom Riley's kayak shop, Central Coast kayaks. He's, stocked our product for quite a long time. Um, but it's a lot of the dive shops and then we've got a fewer than surf shops that have a product too. Not as many as their dive shops, but we've been selling the dive product for a lot longer. And going, looking at the site, it appears you, you also sell direct. We do. Yep. You can definitely go on the website and buy right there. Yeah. Like I said, this is a great website as far as, um, all the information is very well laid out how everything works. Like I said, lots of great videos. Yeah. We've tried to really focus on adding video content over the last couple of years, because that's what everybody wants to see. They want to see the footage of sharks being deterred by the technology. And luckily with all the testing that's been done recently and the advent of GoPros, they've been able to capture that footage. And so we're able to see it working in action. Yeah. I said, I mean, I believe it. I've seen it. I've, uh, um, what's he say? Santiago, my first time was off Dania Beach. Long red sit inside. Where's Dania Beach or Dania Beach? Uh, that's uh, on the east coast of Florida. I kind of figured he was a Florida guy. Um, oh, um, prokayakfishing.com. That's that's uh, that's Tom that's Riley's Tom. site, I believe. Um, Noah's boat, Santiago. Um, no fishing kayaks we just made do. Yeah, it's kind of like when I started, it was all you just made boats, boats work. Um, and, and the cool thing is, is now there are fishing kayaks and, and product that is geared towards us. Um, I'm sorry, I know we, we mentioned it earlier. How long did you say the, the battery would run again? Like six uh, hours? Six hours on the Freedom 7, yep. That's, that's great. Um, and how long does it take to recharge? Um, it's about 90 minutes now. Is that all? Yeah, with the new battery technology, it really cut down the charge time. It used to be three hours. That's amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely cool. Um, I kind of zipped through the comments. I'd anyway, love to see some more questions on here. Um, so uh, like I said, we want to get plenty of shares and comments to uh, make this worthwhile. Somebody is going to win a Freedom 7. So I know there's questions about people being able to afford it. Well, now you're going yeah. to get afford it. You're going to get it free, but we need uh, some a lot of shares. So share this with your friends. Bring on some more comments. Um, again, uh, this is Amanda from Ocean Guardians, powered by Shark Shield. Um, and the website there is sharkshield.com, which we've been kind of showing and, um, make sure that you can uh, see all the information. Oh, they got a couple more questions just popped up. Um, 
uh, Peter asks, can you charge and operate the unit simultaneously? You cannot. And that's another one of the things that's on the list for the kayak fishers in addition to the running it off of a nine volt battery. Yeah, I imagine if it or a 12 volt, you know, the, the 12 yep. volt, uh, I imagine if you could plug in your, your external battery. So if it had a internal battery and then you could plug in your external battery as well to extend your life would be kind of interesting. I, yep. I, like, I like that idea. Um, <laughs> and I just kind of threw this, will the units be rechargeable via a 12 volt battery? Yeah, I know Tom wants that. He's been one of the ones been asking for that for <laughs> over here. Uh, Jeremy wants to get one, another one for his daughter. Um, Zach, are you planning to come back to Central Coast Kayaks for another presentation anytime soon? You sold me on the product at the last one. Um, well, yes, I do need to get back to California. And Tom is always awesome at welcoming me to come and do presentations. Um, with a five week old, I'm struggling with my travel schedule. I have to go to Cape Cod next month. So I'm sure later this summer I might be back. Um, yeah, with a, with a, with a newborn, I'm sure it's, uh, it's hard to get away. Um, another one from Jeremy, we got the same guys popping in questions here. Are the engineers kayak anglers? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's always nice when that happens. Uh, you yeah. know, we have companies that we work with that, um, well, like Yak Attack, for instance, mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody there basically kayak fishes. So, but they're designing things that are kayak fishing specific. So yeah. this, is, this is a little bit different. Um, yeah. And you don't want to, like I said, it, 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 it's, it's a great product. It's a great item. But it, again, we mentioned it before. It is kind of a niche product. So you can't narrow down, like making a kayak fishing specific unit. Mm -hmm. would narrow it down and make it very difficult for the company. I would imagine it's better having something that's a little more broad, like yeah. what we're doing using the Freedom 7 on a kayak, but is also yeah. used by the divers. Yeah. And, you know, we have ocean swimmers that use it. Um, yeah. And some people now are using the Freedom 7 in the way that we're going to be using the Boto 1 product. So they're attaching it to a float already and putting it off the back of the boat. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Um, well, I mean, I, I may as well ask this. I mean, there is a substantial price jump when you look at the the Boat 01 um, compared to a Freedom 7. Yeah. Um, wh how, why, why such a big price jump? Um, when you look at all the things that are in there, I mean, it's got a 12-hour battery runtime. You're able to power off the mains. I mean, it is a very heavy-duty industrial marine industrial design with all the connectors that have to be put into there. Um, the field size is a lot larger. So the boat 01 is 20 by 25 feet. Um, the fish 01 is 20 by 50 feet. So we've got a significantly larger field that we're covering as well. Okay. Well, like I said, I mean, as a charter boat captain, um, that would pay for itself very quickly, I would think. <laughs> You know, yeah. with, with happy clients because uh, there, there, it sucks going out on a boat and just lo constantly losing your 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 fish. And um, I mean, we caught. Fun out of it. Yeah, well, we I was in uh, Louisiana, and we you know we were catching 135, 140 pound yellowfin tuna off our kayaks, and uh, one of the guys is just on a sleigh ride. He's going so fast I couldn't keep up with him. And we wow. assume this fish was just running from the shark because oh. he brought back an enormous head. Um, wow. But it was like bit through like butter. I mean, just like the, I don't think the uh, freedom seven would have stopped anything because it was down so deep when it happened. But mm. um, you know, when you have a 140 pound tuna and then all of a sudden you just bring up a head, yeah. that's uh that's a lot of lost meat. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Were you guys and, following the, uh, the shrimp trawlers? Yes. 
we have guys that actually dive into that. So they dive in behind the trawler boat. So the, the tuna chase the shrimp and then the sharks chase the tuna. So they are like, I've had guys say they jumped in and they just, it's, they're just in a swarm of tuna and then all of a sudden the sharks come in. Yeah, it's it was one of the sharkiest um, situations I had ever been in. Um, and it was the full food chain. Like you said, mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the bycatch. It was the shrimp. It was the bycatch from the shrimpers. Uh, so you had small fish. Uh, you, know, you said the shrimp and then you had small tuna and then in come the bigger yellowfin tuna and, uh, you know, hammerhead sharks, bull sharks, duskies. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we landed, uh, well, it was actually funny as one of the guys, uh, was a deckhand on the boat. He had never fished out of a kayak. We put him in the kayak. His very fir first fish he caught was a, um, small blackfin tuna. His very next fish was the about what we estimated was 140 pounder that got bit in half. His next fish was about a 350 pound dusky shark. Wow. So yeah, that was one of the sharkiest places I've ever been. <laughs> uh, amazing fishery. If you ever get a chance to fish in Louisiana, it is amazing. I don't think even with a shark shield, I would want to jump in behind a shrimp trawler. That, I mean, I did it in the kayak and that was sketchy enough. I don't think I would, um, um, I don't think I would want to uh, do that as a diver. I, I, I'm just. Yeah. There's a lot of crazy divers down in Louisiana. It's not that. No, oh, there we go. We kind of dropped out for a second there. Yep. Uh, are sharks the only marine life deterred by the shield? Have there been any studies? Are sharks the only ones with the receptors? Won't it affect a fish's lateral line? Sorry, that's my last question. <laughs> that was not a question. That was <laughs> that was my last um, <laughs> question. <laughs> so I think we kind of touched on a lot of these before, but I'll go through it again quickly. So um, sharks and rays are the only marine life that are affected, affected by an ampullae of Lorenzini. Um, rays aren't affected as much as sharks. And there are some shark species that are not as affected, like wobegongs, port jacksons, carpet sharks. So some of the ones that are more the bottom dwelling species because of the amp um, orientation of their ampullae of Lorenzini. And some of them, it's just not as sensitive. So they are, are not as much affected by the field. Um, so yes, there have been studies done on the technology. There's actually been four studies done um, over the last, I think the first one was done in 2006, then another one 2012, another one 2015, 16, and then another one in 2018. Um, all very positive, proving the efficacy of our technology. And I think there was another question that was on there. I can't see the, the question. Uh, so, something about affecting the fish's lateral line. Oh, so the lateral line is pressure changes. Um, same thing with sharks. So that does not affect any fish at all. Um, it's purely an electrical receptive sense. So it doesn't affect the fish at all. Awesome. And Jeremy said, perfect answer. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Santiago asked a question for me, Jim, uh, do you feel a angler that has hooked a, let's say tarpon should cut the line when a shark is chasing the fish? I rare, rarely, very rarely does the angler or the fish win. Um, yes. And I mean, that's a tough one because usually it happens so fast. I mean, when a shark comes in after a tarpon, it's usually a pretty quick hit and it happens before you even realize it. I think you're better off having something like the shark shield where you can, can deter it before that happens. I generally don't like cutting a line on a fish that's a ways after because I don't like leaving a fish with, you know, trailing 25, 30 yards of line. So I, th I think every situation is probably different. But every time I've seen a shark hit a tarpon, it kind of came out of nowhere <laughs> and it was on them so quickly. So I think, again, you're better off having something like the shark shield in the water uh, when you are getting that fish anywhere near you. Um, and again, we touched on this earlier. Can you design a croc version and a sea lion version? 
if only they had ampullae of Lorenzini's. You know, we do have people in like Northern Territory of Australia that swear that it works on crocodiles, but you know, we've never done any. It probably story. works on a crocodile when the crocodile comes up and bites it. <laughs> yeah. Then he gets a little zap in his mouth. Amanda, we've been on for an hour. Okay. Uh, I really appreciate your time, everybody. We no will problem. be giving away a Freedom 7 thanks to Amanda. So everybody say thank you to Amanda. Um, I will be selecting a winner tomorrow. That gives everybody, you know, the people who are watching this as a replay, a chance to uh, chime in, uh, make a send a question or a comment or just say, hey, I'm watched. Uh, because you do need to comment on here to be eligible. We do need a lot more shares. Uh, in order to give this away and make it worth Amanda's time to be here and give this thing away. So please uh, share this for us. I do appreciate it. And Amanda, again, thank you for all your support of our show for the last few years. I really appreciate it. And I, I appreciate you being on here with us today. My pleasure. And I will chat with you later. I'm going to drop you off and uh, okay. you take care Sounds and take care of that new baby. I will. Thanks. Right. Bye bye. Well, thanks everybody for joining us again. Um, we have another show scheduled for next Friday and I will have the guys from uh, Cyber Fishing on with us. If you haven't seen these, it's a, uh, uh, a device that attaches to your rod. It counts every cast you make. It tracks you via Google Maps, which you can then download your map. Um, you hit a button on it when you make, when you have a catch. So you have every single cast. So it shows exactly what areas you covered, not just which area you went through. Um, and then again, you uh, tag that and it'll, it'll mark every time you make a catch. It's a really cool thing. I've been using this now uh, for the last couple of months and I've really enjoyed using it. And uh, it really helps you learn you know, where you're making your catches. So these guys will be on the show next week and I'm sure we'll be giving one or two of those away. Um, again, I, I appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, if you are going out on this, uh, this busy holiday weekend, please make sure you wear your PFD and keep your paddle right side up. You take care.